Hey guys, I'm, work, I'm still working on the ball handles, the batch of them for the universal pillar tool. Thought I'd try a little experiment here. I've got the camera rigged up on a wire over top of the lathe and I wanted to show you how you turn the ball handles, uh, the taper portion of them. So let me see if I can flip the iPhone down so it's pointing at the lathe. So here is, it's kind of cool, the, these are the blanks. Let me go grab a visual aids here. I just finished turning one. This one just came off the lathe. That looks super nice. I haven't made the flat part yet. I'll do those probably tomorrow night. These are the blanks just like you see in here. And as if you followed the other videos, you leave this portion that 7 16 inch thick, turn that ball and then flip it around and you have to relieve a portion of it here in order to turn this ball the uh, 9 16 inch ball but <clears throat> now the 9 16 inch ball is sitting in the cup the George Thomas design cup that I talked about in one of the previous videos the um, tail the small 7 16 inch ball has a hole drilled in it center drilled for the 60 degree um, tailstock live center here and so what what you do is you set up your blank in here and then you play with the angle, the angle of the top slide. What it, I've got it about one and a half degrees right now. I started out with the first one at two, and I took successive thin cuts of about ten thousandths a piece. With this, um, I love my little um, diagonal tool tool holder here, and it's nice because it gives you clearance at both ends. You'll see that in a second. And so I took ten thousandths at a time, and I noticed it wasn't quite tapering enough at the big end. Um, when I was getting close to the, the minor diameter of the small end. So I just stopped and I nudged the tail st the uh, top slide just a teeny bit to make the, the angle shallower about, like I said, about one and a half degrees versus the close to two that it was before. So now I'm cranking, oh, and I also set zero, zero with my top slide when I was done. Um, not that that's terribly important. I mean, you, you can do this all mostly by eye and feel. So if you're listening on headphones, now would be a good time to turn down the volume because I'm about to turn the lathe on and I will show you how I, how I cut this. I know I don't often do live shots, but I thought it'd be a kind of a cool thing. So I'm coating some cutting oil on the part right now. I've got the, this is cranked in, that's too far. You wanna crank this in crank the top slide and the cross slide in so you just make contact and I'll take off like 10,000 at a time like I said. So here we go, turn the volume down if you got headphones on and here we go. So I'm going to lathe, cranking in about 10,000 and sorry about the wiggly camera, you can see it cutting there and then back it up. I barely cut anything. I'm going to crank it in another 10. I'm going to take off 10 thou. The reason the camera is shaking is that it's suspended by a wire over top of the lathe, but the angle is good for you to see what I'm doing here. So I hope it's not too shaky. Crank in another 10. Take off, peel off a little layer there. That's kind of the way I look at this. I mean, you're just peeling off 10 thou at a time until you get down to the nice, smooth, slender part of the handle there. It's actually kind of fun. I get a great deal of enjoyment out of this. <laughs> I hope it's enjoyable to watch. But like I said, I really do like this little uh, diamond tool holder. You could use any kind of a cutter obviously but the diamond tool holder is really neat because it uses that quarter inch piece of high speed steel so you're uh, and you just sharpen I mean you can touch it up with a diamond a, I mean an actual diamond stick or a, a Arkansas stone or something like that in between uses and you get a lot of uses out of the you know one sharpening and if, if it gets really dull you can take it off put it on the little grinding attachment and put it up, you know, touch it up against your bench grinder and you're good to go for a long time. So each pass I'm cranking in 10 thou on the cross slide, 
cutting the angle with the top slide, just cranking it back. Another 10 down. You can see the form coming in nicely. I mean, it won't be but a couple of more. I'm not worried about the surface finish on these cuts because I'm just removing material. I'll show you. I wanted to show the whole process, show how quick it works. And we're getting real close now. One or two more cuts. So I'm going to take it a little slower. I'll put a little more cutting oil on here. Another 10. A little bit slower, get a little bit better surface finish. And then after I'm done with this, then I hit it with a coarse file and a fine file, some coarse sandpaper and a fine sandpaper. Just there. Careful not to hit the little ball. in the spider attachment I was cutting some threaded rod yesterday. I'm going to take these out so that stops making that noise. Sorry, this will add an extra minute to the video, you guys. But that's, I guess that's kind of a good lesson. When you hear an unusual noise, time to stop and figure out what's going on. You certainly don't want to ruin your lathe if you have a bad vibration of some kind. around. Give you another moment to take a look at the taper that I'm cutting. What I'm talking about, this is a, a Grizzly 12 by 36 lathe. And it has a, it's a, a gunsmith version of the lathe that has a spider attachment on the uh, back of the spindle that you can put these bolts in that have brass tips on them. So if you're cutting a lot of threaded, I mean, or threading a bunch of rod, we've got some long round stock that you're machining, it's real handy for, you just put the, the bolt, bolts in there and use them almost like a, you would a four jaw chuck or something to keep them centered. So that's what that was. That was that noise. So you can see, yeah, we're very, very close here. I'm going to, I'll start it and I'm going to crank it back. Notice that I've been careful not to crank the top slide too far because I don't want to interfere here. So here we go. Crank it back. I'm going to cut in just a couple thou, not a full ten. I'm watching to see if I get it. There we go. That was about three thousandths of an inch. I'm going to go real slow here. Get a nice smooth surface finish. You can see the small chips that are coming off there. We'll just blend the, the little bit of a bump that we'll end up with at the big end. I'll blend that with the file. Matter of fact, to get close here, I'm going to ease up a little bit. Withdraw right. we'll that, crank this back. This is actually rougher than the other ones. Strain that came out that rough. But here's the medium or coarse file. I just lay it on there, and it's pretty easy to tell when you're about done. It shines up pretty good. You see fewer lines in your handle. Let the machine do the work. pretty rough. Terrible example to do a video, but that's life. And much work has went into these things, I'm not going to worry about it. I mean, we'll, sh we'll shine it up real good. Get it pretty good so it's fairly shiny with the uh, medium file. Uh, 
quite there yet. You can tell the difference in the cutting. Just the fine file feels a lot smoother. And I do keep a file brush on the lathe. I'll clean the files out after each handle or every other handle. All right, it's pretty shiny. I still see a couple of stripes in there. See how nicely supported it is between the cup and the little live center. All right, now some coarse sandpaper. This is like 80 grit. I just keep my fingers on there loose because for safety, I don't want to. If anything gets caught in there, I would just let go of the sandpaper and move my fingers away. It's not worth risking your safety. Kind of feel when it gets smooth. There we go. Just a couple of stripes in there. That's unusual. Each, each one is different. And that's life. So here we go now the fine sandpaper. The sandpaper that's been soaked in cutting oil and WD 40 and all sorts of oils just laying around the lathe. I just I use this over and over again. If we want to, when I get done, I can always polish it up some more. Let's see, I've got a red somewhere here. Shine it up. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I'm going to call this one done for now anyway. There we go. That looks pretty good. Better than we started anyway. So you just back the tailstock off. Get your chuck wrench. Just ease up on the little cup and the ball comes out and there you have it. So I hope that was helpful. I'll show one more time. I'll put the next blank in. Next blank. Put it in the cup. Snaps right in there. Ease the tail stock into the little tail live center into the tail hole there. I guess it's really proper to put a little bit of oil on that because there is a vibration area but I'll put some cutting oil on the part and you just tighten it back up again and you're good to go ready to make the next one. So I hope that was interesting everybody. I hope the camera didn't shake too much while it's suspended from this wire and um, thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions I'll keep you posted. Bye.